Internet on the Base. This afternoon, I have the pleasure to talk with Christina Cleave, who has over 70 acting credits to her name, has also done producing, directing, and writing. Welcome, Christina. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> mentioned in the uh, in the open there is that you are an acquired equestrian. Equestrian. Equestrian, yeah. Cece. There you go. Equestrian. <laughs> did you still find that you, you rode horses as a child? And for from what I read, again, I did a lot of reading. It's like 10 years, from like 6 to 16, somewhere in there. Longer, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. did, yeah. Do you still find time to ride? And Yeah, I so I always try to ride in between, like whenever I can find horse or a place to go riding um, and now I started again um, recently at a barn that I found so yeah I like always I'd say that I never go a year without riding I always but now I'm trying to go once a week as a kind of um, yeah because it's a good exercise it's good to be around horses it's very like it's very soothing I, th I think it's not necessarily soothing but horses challenge you in a way that like Normally, you don't get challenged because they're so 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 intuitive and so sensitive. So, um, yeah, it's just. Yeah. Do you do you have your own horse? I mean, do you have a horse? What's what's your no, horse's name? If you have no, one, I wish I had my own horse. Okay. I was actually um I want to adopt a horse off the racetrack. Um, they but it's it's really hard to find a good horse because they drug them up so much, so they get hurt very easily. So even when you adopt a horse off the track, very often they have like um either soft tissue issues or they've got chips in their bones because they've been literally like raced so hard and this is when they're like three years old and horses live to be in their mid-20s so imagine like that's how much they've been worked at such a young age that um, they're already so hurt at, at that age so it's hard to find one that I, I that I can adopt give a good second home to but that also is um, fit enough to still ride it's hard. I'm on a search. I'm looking. Eventually, right. the horse will find me. There you go. And that's well. That's what happened with my, myself. I have a, I have a puppy that I got, uh -huh. and my puppy found me. Yeah. That's, that's the way it goes. Those yes. animals find us. Yeah. Now let's get down to brass tacks. We're here because you were in Halloween. I mean, we're here for other things too. But Halloween, Rob Zombie's Halloween. Now, again, in doing my research, I read that horror movies really weren't, they weren't really your thing growing up. You went to a party. They had Nightmare on Elm Street. You came home. You said. I don't want to. I don't want to do have anything to do with this. But then you jump feet first in the deep end into a horror movie directed by Rob Zombie. You're you're naked and you're brutally murdered. I mean, how do you go from not ever wanting to do this to that? Um, I think uh, wanting to be an actor, <laughs> wanting a job. Um, okay. Uh, I I you know honestly like I didn't have. I actually did shockingly. When I got the offer, I asked a couple people, should I do this? Because I didn't know how big of a deal it was. Like I didn't realize that Halloween was such a popular franchise. I had no clue. And the people who I asked looked at me and like were with their mouths wide open being like, are you fucking kidding? Like, are you really asking us that? Like, are you crazy? Yes, there's no question you have, because I knew I had to be nude and I didn't want to do, I mean, I, I just didn't think, I mean, I grew up doing theater. I was like, a, you know, I, I, why would I have to get naked in a movie? Like, that's not part of the job, right? Like, why would I do that? But yeah, I, you know, when they, when they looked at me and said, are you crazy? I thought, okay, maybe I should think about this a couple times. And yeah, so I, I agreed to do it and that was part of the contract, so can't really you know and they made me do the nude scene first so that I couldn't get out of it so that was the, that was one of the first scene you yeah. did yeah yeah it was the first scene what, the, really the, yeah so how, how zombie works it's not really I don't even think it's Rob Zombie I think it's the studio right because oh. they're so worried that if if they film like, you really? let's say they had filmed us in the school first then I could have been like well I don't want to do the nude scene but you've already spent a bunch of money shooting these scenes and now you would have to like rehire somebody else blah 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 so they know they're they're very savvy and they you know make you do those scenes first so they can't get out of it they're pretty much pot committed at the time now let me ask you so then how hard is that then to so when we all watch movies we watch movies from beginning to end but now you're doing a part that's 
more towards the end. How do you get into that character feeling feeling like Linda that early in the movie? It's not like a build up. Like we see you build up to that character in a way. How do you do that starting out in that? Having that being your first scene, having to have all those emotions and all that mm -hmm. fear be, and not well, doing the rest of it first. So I think um, the first first scene they did was when I'm already dead. So oh, okay. I didn't even have to do anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was just really awkward for me as a human being. Um, but then I'm not sure if we did the sex scene next or if we did, um, I can't remember. But either way, I was lucky because the guy who they cast as Bob, I knew um, since college, I had known him. And we were friends and we used to have the same manager in new york um so i i totally knew him very well and that was a huge relief to have to play that scene you know that, that at least i knew him you know sure i could trust him so yeah yeah what did oh but so about lee the character yeah. Going, <coughs> um, what about Linda, yeah i think you know honestly a lot of it was written on the page a lot of it was so clear to me like what they what he wanted was, it was so, I don't know. I, I think um, I just, I, I'm kind of like a pretty go with the flow person. Like I, I don't, I didn't, I knew the lines, you know, I prepared myself like that. I was like, okay, she's a teenager. She's, um, she's obviously a bad girl. She's kind of like, you know, I just have to bring that kind of sass and that, that tough New York attitude that I already have in a way like so I kind of just brought myself to it and, and then played the scenes and played off of the character played off of Scout and Danielle and like we were just playing with each other I think we we um, yeah it just came out like naturally do you do you keep in contact with Scout and Taylor do you in a way do you still just through social media or do you get together every not get together but do you contact each other throughout the year yeah i mean no not since the pandemic so much right. but um before yeah like scout used to crash on my couch when she needed a place to stay um with her dog yeah uh or you know if she needed an apartment and i wasn't in town i would let her stay there or um you know i'm always happy to lend a helping hand <laughs> that's great <laughs> so I don't know, but that's like, but so yeah, we used to hang out before the pandemic. So now, now you did Halloween, then you have Halloween and Proxy. Now, are you falling into this genre of doing movies, doing horror movies, do you feel like that's going to be your path? Or are you gonna, um, are you open to other things, or, or is there something that you're looking to do as well? Are you want to do a, I don't know, romantic um, comedy, comedy or whatever? No, I would totally love to do romantic comedy. Um, I, I actually don't have not been doing horror movies that much lately anymore. Okay. Like, I mean, I, I did Brooklyn 45, but it's really yep. more of a supernatural. Um, it's like a movie about soldiers that come back from war. So, um, and it's about like, you know, foreigners and not judging people by, the, or judging people by the way they speak, but how you're, you know, that's a problem. And um, so I actually like, yeah, I haven't really been doing I've been doing mostly voiceovers, video games. Um, I was in the Home Alone movie, the new Home Sweet Home Alone movie. I played the Siri voice. Um, so if you watched it, um, I was the I spoke in German and in English. Um, did and I was a computer. I played three people in one. <laughs> so, um, and uh, um, so I actually like it's not that I don't want to do horror movies anymore, but I don't want to I. I am so happy and grateful for the movies that I have been able to do, and I, I love all of them. Like, I, I love Proxy, I love Killer Mermaid, I love um, Tales of Halloween, I, I love Halloween, I, I love um, Dementia. I love all the movies that I've been able to do and I'm, um, for a specific reason, because the character was really cool or interesting, or because it was something different, or it was a different kind of story. And I, I always want to do something different. Like I never want to do the same thing over and over. And um, you know, I did a TV show in Germany for two seasons. I was I played a, a psychiatrist on a TV show in German for a German television station. Um, so I think you know, I think that I don't consider myself only a horror okay. actor. Like I mean, yeah. I think that that's I'm definitely moving into a different direction now with also directing and um, and. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, it's all about just keeping it new and fresh and 
not boring anyone out there. You don't want to say the same movie at the same <laughs> no. time a million times. You don't want to see me play the same thing a million times, right? Like, I think it's fun to, you know, to surprise everybody once in a while. Now, now having parents that are from Europe, you jog back and forth in your childhood, and you you know four different languages. So when when I'm talking to you, or when you're talking to someone, or even when you're doing the stuff in Germany. Do you process through the different languages? Now, I don't know what it is. Do you process through all three, all four languages as we're talking or as you're listening to people? I mean, do you know what I'm trying to get <laughs> yeah, at there? Yeah, I totally I mean, do. Okay. I know, so what happens is when I go and I spend time in that country, yeah. I start to, I know that I'm switching. It's hard to switch over to another language. Like, even when I speak to my parents, I speak like half and half. Like, because sometimes some words I don't know in German or some words like I can, you know, so I, but when I go to that country, it takes me usually like a week or 10 days or sometimes even two weeks to completely switch over to the other language. And then I notice if I start dreaming in that language oh, wow. or, or I start, start counting in that language. Like, you know when you count in your head? Yep. Like, usually it still will always be in English because that's what I'm most used to. But I notice it'll switch over when I start counting in my head in that language. That's when I know I've like immersed myself <laughs> uh, but it's it's hard I mean it's not easy you have to keep up with languages they're not you know it's it's also I happen to have a good ear for them not I mean, that's hard that's not everybody has that it's like a um, so I'm grateful for that that for sure yeah. you you mentioned video games let's talk a little bit about how Kane Hatter got mm -hmm. you to do Friday the 13th the video game can you talk a little bit about what, how he did that and what it was like actually voicing that you're a counselor, right? In there? Yeah, so that I played Jenny Myers and I'm just gonna, I like to throw things on the head when okay. I hear tropes like like Kane Hodder got me to do. So I'm only gonna say this because I've always wanted to do voiceovers sure. and voiceover work. So I've been really vocal and I always say to people, if you're doing a voiceover, I wanna audition for it. Like I'm very um, go-getter-ish. I was and I still am. Like I put it out there, and I so I um, I remember Friday the Thirteenth, Kane was doing it, and I went to him, and I said, "Can you introduce me gotcha. to the people who are doing this?" So it was actually me who gotcha. <laughs> who got me that job. <laughs> right. Um, he introduced me though to them, and I and I know he, we had worked together before, so he spoke. You know, he was like, "I liked working with Christina, and you definitely helped me like that." But it was because I like pushed. You know, I was like, I want to work in this. I want to. I want to audition for it, and then I auditioned for it, and um, they made me audition, and I auditioned for all the roles. So how do they, how do they do that though? How do you voice um, a video game? Is, is is it going on in front of you, and they this is mm -hmm. your line at that point, or? So they so they it's it's really weird. Like it's not the easiest thing because they tell you like you're dying like yell like you're you know and you're like in a studio or in a closet and you're just like oh my gosh like are the neighbors gonna think I'm crazy like what's you know because you have to be real and loud or then they're like you're you just put your hand in a disgusting you just found something disgusting now react to it so you kind of you know you just have to make it sound believable and also then the different characters have to have different voices or maybe accents or whatever so it's you don't have the luxury of your face showing emotion so you really have to make it a hundred percent come through your voice and um it's it's taken a lot of practice for me to even get to the point where i i am auditioning in a way that's um competitive right because i'm just competing with my voice like there's nothing else and there are so many amazing voiceover actors like so it's <laughs> But it's fun, and anyway. Have you played the game? Oh yeah, it's the only game I play. <laughs> so that's it's so crazy. I love that game, and I used to be when I, I used to have, like get my glass of red wine because it's scary. That game is scary. Like I'd be like, oh my god, Jason, you hear the noise? You know, you hear the music come, and then like you freeze or something, and you're like, I can't move anymore. And then I'd be like, drink the glass, and I go to the sip. Um, and then you know, it's that game was so much fun and so scary. And I hope that the Texas Chainsaw is. I think they're going to make it similar to that. So I hope that that same. And so you're in that, you're doing that one as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what can you tell? What part again? I cannot say okay. what part I'm All right. playing. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> um, but I, it was, it was, yeah. We, we yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm pretty sure it's going to be awesome, and I hope it's a similar vibe to Friday the Thirteenth game because 
I know how much people love that. So if, if you don't mind, I want to ask you about your, the four different languages that you speak. Now, you might have to dig into this a little bit. Now, one of, the, one of the, your catch lines in Halloween is totally. Yes. Can you can you give us totally in each language? Is that no? You can't. <laughs> I don't even think there is a totally translation. Like, um, well, in German it would be like um, total, total. It would be like yeah. I do say it in German sometimes. Yeah, this is total toll. This is total cool. That would be like it's totally cool. Right. Um, or this is total geil. Um, means that's like really awesome what um in in french i re i french and italian so the thing is that's a kind of a slang thing okay. it's totally right it's kind of like a colloquialism a little bit right mm. i my germ my french and my italian are more studi like i speak you know fluently but it's more like what i learned in school so sometimes there's certain things that if you want to really learn a language hey how you doing hi um, you actually, I think, have to date somebody in that language because there are things you'll never learn unless you actually speak those kind of things to somebody. Like, how do you, it's like pillow talk, right? That's when I think you learn a language really. But anyway, that's a whole other story. I mean, or another conversation. I, I gotcha. <laughs> now, you play the video games. Do you watch your movies? Do you, have you watched, have you watched them? A lot of actors and actresses don't watch their movies. Have you watched yours? Yeah, I watch them at the premiere usually. Okay. Um, and I always hate myself, but that's that's, that's because I'm super critical, and I, I've had to learn to um, not be so overtly, vocally critical of myself. Um, because somebody once told me, like, when you look at yourself and you're saying, "Oh, look, I look so horrible," or "Or look, I sound so horrible," that then people start to believe it. So it's like kind of a weird thing. Like you think, "Oh, I'm." I'm just saying what I think in my head, but the more you say it, the more it becomes reality and the more other people think it as well. So um, I've learned to not criticize myself out loud to other people because that's just creating reality then, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> so also in doing some research for this panel discussion, I, I came across the fact that do you still own a radio station in New York, an oldie station? Do you have anything yeah. to still do with that at all? Yes. Um, yeah. Too much to do with it. Okay. Um, no. I, my, so my dad is in radio. That's what I grew up with and around. And um, I kind of like got the oldie station from him to take over. But um, it's not. It's, it's. I love the oldies. I love oldies. I love fifties and sixties. I love that vibe. Um, but it's not a very lucrative business. <laughs> and uh, But I would tell everybody to listen to radio because, <laughs> you know, it's usually your local radio station is struggling the most out of anybody. Um, and we really try to get like local news out to people like, you know, or like we try to promote local things that are happening in the community. And um, so if you can support your local radio station. <laughs> Christina, is there a 50s or 60s group that if you could go today and see them, if they were Still a band in their prime. What would, who would you see? Um, yeah, like the Kingston Trio, probably, okay. or um, uh, um, the Everly Brothers. I don't know. I love so, or Elvis. Um, yeah. <laughs> do, do you have Do you have any kind of projects going on right now? Yes. Do you have anything that you're working on or that you can talk about? So I I just shot Brooklyn Forty Five, which is for Shutter, and that is. Um, about these, you know, soldiers that I can't talk so much about it. But it's about these American soldiers who just came back from World War II. Um, it takes place in 1945. Okay. And um, there's this German woman who shows up, and you? me, <laughs> and um, and it's kind of about like how we have preconceptions and about things and people based on like their accent or the way they look and how. You know, they, they think I'm a spy, and the question is, am I a spy? I was, my character says no, obviously. I came to this country in 1930. So it's just kind of a question about, like, it's more of a philosophical question about how we deal with preconceptions and things that we think about people and how we project them onto, onto somebody. 
even though we don't know anything about that person. So it's, I, I can't wait for this movie to come out. And especially now with everything that's going on in you know, Russia and Ukraine, and it's like, you know, people are like, the Russians, well, it's really not the Russians. You know, it's their leader, right? Or it's, you know, it's, we've got to remember to the people, humans are all humans. And we are, we are so similar, much more similar than we are different. Do you, do you, have, do you still have some charities and some, uh, some foundations that you're working with? Um, that you want to mention for us? Well, like Best Friends Animal Society, I always support because I love you know animals and rescuing animals, and um, I I'm a big proponent of saving the environment. So anything that helps, I don't even care if like everybody just goes home and reduces the amount of single-use plastics they use today, or just think about it when you go to the store, don't buy a plastic water bottle, just like fill a glass like a or get a glass bottle and fill it with water i don't know i'm just like please can we save the environment every little bit <laughs> every little bit i'll tell you what let's open up the some questions to the audience does anybody have any questions for christina there yes. we go um i was here um of course whenever daniel and scout were here and they said that uh i'm drawing a blank on his name uh, Tyler? Tyler. Tyler Maine was just a giant teddy bear. Is your mm -hmm. opinion the same? Mm -hmm. I love Tyler. And of course, like in the beginning, he used to get really mad when we said that because he wanted to have this image that he's this like big guy. But no, he's such a nice guy and he is a, a big teddy bear. Like he was so gentle and I felt so bad for him that he had to like carry me, you know, naked. Like the poor guy. Like, you know. I was embarrassed, but I think he was probably more embarrassed. You know what I mean? Like he and he was so so kind, and he's a nice. You also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did it for free. Was, was, was that a was that a one was that opening was that all one take or did you did you have to do it more than once? Your whole kill scene. Um, you know, I think the first time I did it, I was so. Mm, uh, con I did not know how to do it. I was freaking out, right? I'm, so I think one time Rob came in and gave me some direction, mm -hmm. and then we did it. And then I think maybe two takes or something. So on the second take, I mean, were, were you you had to have been scared because it showed up on screen? But I mean, was there still the? Did they do anything different, like a tweak of it, so that you still didn't know it was coming? You know, I mean, you would know that okay, he's going to enter the room now, or whatever the case may be. Did they do anything to still make, give you some sort of adrenaline rush, or not really? Hmm. I don't remember. I All think right. I like mostly blocked it out. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Like, but um, I'm sure they did. So. I mean, he came from behind me, yeah. right? So I probably was still surprised somehow. But I think I had to. I grabbed his hands so that I was in control of it. So um, I think it's also acting. You know, we are trained actors. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think there it's there's a reason for it because like we've you know practiced this kind of stuff and how to make it look real no matter what you know so <laughs> well that's that's great is there anything that maybe i missed in this panel discussion that you want to let us know about anything that a red normal panelist would be asking you that i missed <laughs> no you asked so many good questions um it also says that you also mentioned you're a big coffee person. What's your what's your coffee of choice? Might as well get that out of the way. What's your favorite ice cream? Now, what do you like for coffee? <laughs> um, I like I like German Dallmeyer coffee. Um, it's spelled D A L L M A or L M Y R or something. Um, but I like that one. It's I like strong coffee, but um, I like Starbucks, I guess. Which okay. I feel bad about saying because it's a big you know chain, but. I also buy stuff from Amazon, so I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, convenience. This is the problem. This is why the plastics. I'm like, ugh. You it's know, every time. Right? I know it's convenient. That's why every time I'm like, okay, if it's too convenient, it's probably bad. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's so easy to go on Amazon. You can buy anything you want. I mean, you can I just know. go on there. It's just, it's all there. They say that you should buy things from small companies that take longer to ship because the things that ship faster cause more environmental damage. I have one more quick question for you. All right, so in, in our podcast, I'm the sports person. 
Are you, are you a sports person at all growing up in New York? You got a lot of winning teams out there. Yes, I'm a total basketball person. Okay. So I love the Knicks, even though they have been obviously <laughs> <Yeah>. not <laughs> successful no, in a they long have time. Not, no. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Believe me, I'm sorry for us too. But like, I, the only bad I, in New York. <laughs> it is. What do you think about it? What but I love basketball so much. So like, I so for a while, um, I was a big uh, like OKC fan. And I mean, I, I was then Durant moved to like, I think the Warriors, right? Mm -hmm. And then yep. now he's in with the Nets, right? But now he got hurt. So I like to follow certain players. Like, you know, I love him. Um, I love Curry, but like, anyway, I love basketball. But I, I, I used to be a Knicks fan when it was like Ewing and Starks oh, yeah. and like the, the 90s. Yeah, <laughs> so when we were successful and we actually had like a good team, um, but be, okay, I'm a Pirates fan, so. Yeah. Be, be, be it from Milwaukee, I have to ask, do you follow Giannis at all? Giannis? You, Giannis Antetokounmpo? Uh, um, uh, our, our big no. basketball player, no? No, I guess not. All right. Maybe not. Maybe yeah, not, I, not I, now I, you have I, to start I, watching them. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's really all and I have. And I love the Dodgers, The Dodgers? Which is like, all right. I'm sorry, I know, but. Mm. I know. <laughs> Nobody likes the Dodgers, but I do, because I've gone to lots of games, so I. I, I feel like I'm an adopted LA person. Like I used to like the Yankees, now I like the Dodgers. Um, Do you put in more time out in California? Are you out there more than in New York? Are you out in LA? Half and half, I would say. And do you spend do you spend any time over? Do you go over to Europe at all? I mean, with the pandemic, it's probably difficult, but I did go last November, and I finally saw my family okay. for like the first time. Like all my cousins have kids, so I saw them. You know, played with them. They were like, "Who are you, stranger?" Uh, like, you know, I'm like, "Well, I live in New York. It's across the ocean. Um, feel, when you're older, you'll really like me, so you can because you can come visit and yeah. say hi and have a place to stay." But, <laughs> but like, you know, they're I, they're they're cute though. And um, but now, uh, sorry, please, that's not that's not how the I don't know. It's crazy right now. No, I get you. I'm curious, because yeah, yeah. I, I, I figured it would be tough during that time. So, but thank you so much for yeah. coming out today. Thank Is there any other questions listening. we're done? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Marcus. So you said you like boys back then, and I'll try and go back. Do you have an easier time getting motivation in a room by yourself, boys back then, or in a room full of people, cameras, people walking around? That's a great question. That is a really great question. <laughs> Do you want to um, come up here and sit up here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a I switched this one out, Marcus. You had that. Just because I love you. That is a really great question. I almost can't even, I have to really think about that for a second. Um, so, there's something about performing in front of other people. Like, I grew up doing stage and I always feel there's like that extra energy when you stand on a stage in front of people to perform because you are excited, nervous in a way, right? It's like the nerves that play with your adrenaline and the adrenaline helps you perform better because you have like natural energy. Um, but I think you can, you have to find it with voiceover. It's like there's no, Sometimes I do notice when I'm doing an audiobook, I can be like, I can notice, I hear it if I w did not have that energy. And so I kind of, I have to then go back and do it again and I have to find that energy. It's like just about the excitement. I, I actually have a little post-it in my studio that says, have fun. <laughs> because sometimes when you're alone, you can just get in your head or you kind of like, you get into this like, almost like a mundane kind of like, Feeling so I have to remind myself to be like, yeah, like get it, like this is exciting, you know, like. So I think is you have little tricks as a voiceover artist, um, especially if you're not in the studio doing voiceovers. Like when you're in a studio doing voiceovers and you have the sound engineers over there and you have the director there, that's different. Again, I'm performing for them and they're there. But alone in my studio in my house, like. It's in the basement, like, you know, there's nobody there. There's probably like some mice, like, watching. <laughs> Maybe like some other insects, like, but that's not, they're not that much fun to perform for. Um, <laughs> no. So that's a good question, yeah. I, I have one just 
not really a question, it's more of a statement. Okay. So the first thing I saw you in was Rob Zombie's Halloween. And then I enjoyed your acting in that so much. Mm -hmm. And then I started, once I find a movie with somebody that I really like in it, I watch your other stuff. Okay. And you were talking about how you watch your movies and you don't think you're that great. I will tell you, you're amazing at everything. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I always I try to do my best because I know that I want to be good for you guys, you know. Well, you are. Like, so. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Can we do one more thing? Sure. Can you do one of your lines? Remember that time you were a fairy? Oh my gosh. Um, what, okay. Yeah. What, um, what was one of my lines in it? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> In, oh my gosh, from Home Sweet Home Alone? What other ones are you hearing? Um, it, was a, it was something like das, das Wetter in, das Wetter in Tokyo ist uh, 41 Grad. Something like that. It was like the weather in Tokyo is like, um, what a, um, I don't know, give me a line and I'll just do it. Like, or, or no, you can't because it's German. Um, I don't know. Totally. Okay. <laughs> Danke schön, dass ihr alle gekommen seid. <laughs> 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 <laughs>